Hey guys, what's up? Darcy here at Six Strings Nine Lives. Welcome to episode 25 of Six with Six Strings. Definitely been a while since I've done an episode of uh, Six with Six Strings. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, just to set it up for you quickly, it's just me grabbing six random albums from my collection, six random bands. Sometimes it's stuff that I've been spinning. Um, in some cases, I do have a bit of a theme, and today we have a theme on these six albums. Honestly, these are designed to, well, first off, you can't survive a channel by just update and buying things and buying things. Uh, it's just nice to talk about stuff that you already have. And in most, most cases, it sparks some good conversation in the comments section. And if you're anything like me, you like to learn about uh, newer bands and and that's what comes out of the comment section. Or maybe it's a band, well, first of all, maybe it's a band that you've never heard of or it's an album that you haven't spun in a long time, but definitely not new pickups because sure as shit, there'll be somebody in the comments two minutes into a 15 minute video saying, great pickups. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, anyways, let's get into this one. Let me know in the comments, have you heard some of these bands? Could be some of your favorites. Got a little bit of a variety here for sure. So the first one up today, actually I'm spinning a recent reissue that I will talk about in my next update by Liege, Liege Lord, Liege Lord, which has Joe Como. This is actually their third album featuring Joe Como on vocals, which really um, well comes in, comes into play on this next album. I'm going to show you a band that I enjoy. I live here in Canada, so I have known about Annihilator for years and years. Um, but so often than not, a lot of people kind of lose track of Annihilator after their first two albums. Uh, yes, those are fantastic albums, but I'll tell you, it's not where it ends with Annihilator. There's lots of great albums to search out. And this is their eighth studio album from 2001. So this one is the first of two to feature Joe Como on vocals. So, and I said in the beginning of the video, there's a bit of a theme here. The theme today is change. And yes, you know, there's lots of changes in bands and things like that, but these six all have some sort of change or uh, uh, not rebirth, but maybe a little bit comeback on a couple of these, but that's kind of the theme today. So the change here was Joe came in, and at this point, like I said, this is their eighth studio album already on, if you include Jeff Waters on vocals, this is already their fifth vocalist, but this is an underrated era of the band to me. This album and the next one called Waking the Fury were two fantastic Annihilator albums. I would take this one over the one I just mentioned, but uh, great album with Joe on vocals. You might also know Joe. Well, you definitely check out this Liege Lord album. This is called uh, Master Control, just recently reissued on Metal Blade. Top notch, more of a metal album. This is definitely your thrash and, and speed metal mixed together with Annihilator. You know Annihilator's sound. So Joe's vocals are a lot faster on here. Um, actually, it's a good mix on here. Anyways, I will pull out this so you can actually see the... Where's Actually, there's Joe on the back. Um, and Joe used to have a full head of hair on this Allege Lord album, which we'll show, like I said, in a future update. There's Jeff, the mastermind behind Annihilator. I've always been a fan of Annihilator. Mostly Jeff and his guitar work is just fantastic. So check this album out. It's a sleeper. Uh, if you're just stuck on those first two, you know, check a few out. And very soon, and I just, I haven't got any more information on the uh, Ear Music's campaign to release Annihilator's fourth through fourth, fourth through 14th studio album, all being reissued. I would imagine two at a time, you know, probably two at a time every two to three months type of thing. That's coming. Uh, they recently, or last year, they reissued Metal 2, which was reworked version of their album called Metal. But anyways, let's a uh, couple of tracks on here. Fantastic. Actually, the whole first half of this album, Denied, uh, the, perp uh, the Perfect Virus, great song. The title track, Carnival Diablos, if I didn't even mention the title, I'm sorry. But, uh, and my favorite song on here, kind of an ACDC vibe, uh, Shallow Grave, with actually uh, a very uh, reminiscent solo with an Angus would do. So Jeff, uh, you know, Jeff knows his stuff. He's a great guitar player, love him. 
Um, but yeah, check out some other Annihilator albums, and especially those ear music reissues. I will, uh, you know, if I hear any more information of when those are going to start, I will definitely talk about it on my channel. So that was their 2001 release. It's too bad that Joe was only in the band for two albums, because uh, like I said, I really love that era of the band. Uh, next two I'm going to show you. Definitely changes in the band, and uh, but these two are kind of related in a way. And this one I was just listening to the other day, and I said, I got to include this one in this episode because I love this album, and I love the change. So this is Gamma Ray's fourth album from 1995. If you're familiar with uh, Kai Hansen, one of my favorite all-time rock stars, put it that way. He's definitely high up on my list. Just love his energy, love his attitude, love his voice. Um, um, Walls of Jericho from Halloween, you know him uh, on there. And of course, the their EP or mini album, self-titled. Those are two of my all-time favorite uh, albums and mini album. And I love Kai's voice. So what happened here? What's the change? Uh, the first three Gamma Ray albums were with Ralph Sheepers on vocals. But Ralph left the band, went on to form uh, Primal Fear with Matt Sinner which is a band I do love and have shown on my channel, even did a ranking video on all their albums. So go check that out if you'd like. But um, I've always loved Kai's voice. He's not, you know, the typical, you know, high range, great singer. He just has a unique voice that fits this style of music, especially, you know, this album and a couple more after this are absolutely some of my favorites. Even has, uh, yeah, you know, um, Fang Face from Halloween, or uh, Walls of Jericho cover. Fang Face is on the cover of Land of the Free, which I didn't mention the title again. So, yes, first album without Ralph on vocals, which nothing against Ralph Sheepers. I love him in Primal Fear, uh, but I just think Kai. Kai is the man for me on vocals uh, with anything Gamma Ray. Hope they still continue, but they actually do have a, a regular... Uh, singer now but hopefully Kai still does a few songs here and there so check that one out from 1995 and I did say that next album would be kind of related and here it is this is still my favorite of the Andy Darris era this is the first album that Andy was on in 1994 so there's the big change Kai left after uh, Keepers 2 then you had a couple of you know so-so albums with uh, Pink Bubbles and Chameleon um, I'll tell you, both of those albums have some couple of good, really good tracks, but they got back on track with this album. You know, of course, Roland Grappow came in, took over for Kai. Kai went on, formed Gamma Ray, da 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 da. But this is a fantastic album, and uh, I, I definitely have this one ranked quite high in my uh, Halloween ranking. Excuse me, mouth is dry. But yeah, like the, like I said, the first one with uh, Andy Darris on vocals. And, you know, the whole thing has come full circle. You know, the whole Halloween story now. They're Pumpkins United. These guys are all back together, which actually their last album was fantastic, too. Um, probably need to do an updated ranking of their catalog. But check out the songs. Uh, Soul Survivor, great song. Why is an awesome track. Um, Mr. Ego. Uh, the uh, Perfect Gentleman, In the Middle of a Heartbeat, great track to check that one out. Kind of a, definitely not a ballad, but kind of a mid, mid pace, but Soul Survivor. That is, if you don't check out anything else, check out that track. Andy Darris, uh, like I said, first one with Andy on vocals. And then we had, um, what did we have after that? We had, um, sorry, the uh, the Time of the Oath. Uh, fantastic album, Better Than Raw. Actually, those three right there are just top-notch Darius era albums. So, so we got two, like I said, two related there and definitely some changes on there. All right, coming up next, let's go. Oh, we'll heavy it up a bit here too. So here's a band that um, well, prior to probably <coughs> two to three years ago. Yeah, let's go with two years ago. I wasn't really into a whole pile of death metal, but uh, here's a band that was introduced to me by several uh, great channels right here on YouTube. But this is uh, Asphyx, 
or some people say ace fix, but I think it's just ass fix. So this is their 2009 album called Death the Brutal Way. What's the change here? Well, you know that the first two um, Ass Fix albums had Martin Van Drunen on vocals, called one's called The Rack, and then the last one on Earth, that one was from, what, 92? <clears throat> and then Martin was gone from the band, uh, fin finally came back, 2009. They have reformed and they have put four just absolutely bone crushers out. Um, that's how best I can describe it. But this is death, death metal with Martin's desperate cry for help vocals. <clears throat> uh, Paul Paul Byans, who is the guitar player, who came over with Martin from Hail of Bullets, which they did three albums together. I've said it probably six or seven times in, in various videos. Paul's guitar tone is absolutely bone crushing. It, I just love it. It's aggressive. Um, it, it's mean. Uh, I don't know what else I could say to describe it, but just love that guitar tone. But So this is Martin back in the band. He brings along Paul and they're still going to this day. Uh, other albums to check out from these guys would be uh, uh, Death Hammer, um, incoming death a lot of death right and their latest album from a couple years ago is necrosaurus <clears throat> i hope they're working on something new because that was a necrosaurus absolutely top-notch album i think it was in my ranking for album probably three or four or five of that year actually quite a surprise for me but anyways great great album check out the tracks um, and I did actually, I'm just staring at this and I forgot to tell you uh, any tracks to check out here. I, I'm going to get back to that because there's some good, good shit on here. Just a second. Okay. Asphyx. Death the Brutal Way. Check out um, Scorbutix. The first, uh, yes, I said that right. The leadoff track, absolutely crushing. Uh, the title track, Death the Brutal Way. And check out uh, Black Hole Storm some little little death metal to get you uh, uh pumped up um from ace fix or ass fix sorry all right got to mention a couple tracks from here because actually michael uh kiski is on this album he's on a track called time to break free singing uh with uh, splitting the vocals with kai but check out the tracks from land of the free gamma ray sorry gamma ray land of the free uh rebellion in dreamland top notch song um, Gods of Deliverance, check out that one. Salvation's Calling is a real, actually just a speed metal track. It's just got that whole um, 1983, 84 Halloween feel. And another one of my personal favorites is Abyss of the Void. So yeah, great album from Gamma Ray. Actually, that one came out on Noise Records. I would love to see a Noise Records box set of, of the early Gamma Ray. I would be all over that. All right, let's wrap this one up. I, like I said, I like to keep the time down on these episodes. Not that it really matters, but... <clears throat> All right, next, the big change here. So, um, what year was it? Um, 1992, Exodus comes out with uh, Force of Habit. And then they go away for how many years? They go away for 12 years and they come back... So I'll call this their comeback and, you know, another big change. Um, because, But the change came a little bit after this album got released and then kind of set the pace. But this is Tempo of the Dam from 2004. Got to see them open for Megadeth on this tour. It was awesome. But just prior to them going out on tour, uh, Steve Zetro Souza was fired from the band and then they had to have a fill-in vocalist. And then you know the story. The next year they brought on, um, or the next year they came out with another album, uh, Shovel Headed Kill Machine with Rob Dukes on vocals for the next three albums, uh, plus a covers album. But, anyways, Zetro does the vocals on this. And to me, you know, this is one of the very best Exodus albums they've ever done. Um, their albums that came after this, and even up to their latest album, they have not matched it in my opinion this one is just a step above uh contains one of my absolute favorite 
uh, Exodus tracks called Blacklist, uh, War is My Shepherd, um, Shroud of Urine would be absolutely my second favorite track on this one. And we have a um, an older track kind of brought forward again called Impaler, uh, but just top notch solid album. And this one, yeah, like I said, this did have Zetro and at the time still had uh, Rick Hunolt on guitars. Uh, and you know that to this day, Lee Altus takes that spot in the band and has been in the band since uh, sh um, Shovelhead Kill Shovel Headed Kill Machine from 05 with Dukes on vocals. But if you've somehow slept on this album or this era or rebirth of Exodus, highly recommend this one. And uh, so that one was from 04. Yeah. So time flies. Yeah. Like I said, I saw them um, open for Megadeth on the uh, System Has Failed tour. Great show. Uh, you know, those were the those were in the days where I actually could, you know, kind of pummel my way to the front of the stage but those days are they're limited put it that way anyways last today i'm going to wrap this one up with um actually i was on my holidays and and, and a comment came in uh, you know saying that this album is not as bad as people make it out to be and you know what i gave it a re-listen because i think i've been personally too hard on this album over the years i've had it since day one i do have it on vinyl but i'm going to show you my original cd which when I got it, I will show you how it actually was sitting on the shelf in the record shop. I remember Iron Maiden, The X Factor, and this is how they showed the cover. Uh, I think this one just was, uh, you know, the, the other regular real cover is just two graphics at the time, whatever. But this is The X Factor, which, you know, the real... Uh, real deal cover so they didn't show that part so uh yeah 1995 you know this is the the big change here the first album with blaze bailey and like i said i honestly over the years have been too hard on this album looking back um and there will be a a, a re-ranking of iron maiden because this one has definitely moved up a couple notches i won't lie to you and i would like to be able to include senjitsu into my ranking but this is a really good album. The guitar work on here, the solos, uh, fantastic. It's a very dark album. There's lots of there's war themes on here, um, you know, just life stuff. But I gave this, I think I listened to it three more times just over the past month or so. Uh, like I said, definitely uh, moving up the ladder, a little too hard on it type of thing. But uh, this one has aged well i'm gonna put it that way and uh, yeah virtual 11 not so much but this one yes so anyways that is my six for today uh, like i said jump in the comments let me know if you know some of these albums or maybe these are bands that you don't know i'm sure you know iron maiden but uh you know like i said before earlier in the video people jump off the annihilator train after the first two albums you know, I always say, you know, even a band like Flotsam and Jetsam, they, people only know the first two albums. There's just so much more to discover. Uh, you don't have to run out and go and buy all this stuff, but you can definitely give it a listen to. And again, really appreciate the uh, recommendations in the comments section. And uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed that one. I will see you soon with another video. And until next time, stay heavy.